Okay, the webinar is being recorded. Uh, once the once we're done with the webinar, uh, we typically upload the webinar recording to our YouTube channel. Uh, any examples that I will be demonstrating to you today are also going to be posted to our blog with a link to the to the webinar recording. Okay, so today we're talking about ten things you cannot do with Blaze DS, and uh, we'll not be talking about a whole lot about Blaze DS. We'll be focusing on Web Warp specifically things that make web work different. Uh, if, there are, if there is anyone who is familiar with, uh, uh, with Blaze DS and have any doubts whether the things that I show with web work are actually possible with Blaze DS, please challenge me. I'd like, I'd like to have a discussion going here. So hopefully that will, uh, that will make it interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. I do have an instance of uh, web work right here on my screen. I'm going to go ahead and get, get, uh, get the server running. And uh, so here it is. The server is ready. And let's just uh, get going. So here, uh, number one, generic destination. So you will see that I actually have a list of 10 things here prepared for you. I'll be introducing them one by one. Uh, and they are, you know, they are ordered in a certain way. I started with the most basic first and kind of uh, com complexity is going to be increasing. But let's start with the most basic one, and uh, we call it generic destination. So here, let me show you, I put together a little uh, very trivial Java service. So I have a, a class called weather service, and uh, with just one method, and uh, it's, uh, you know, get weather, gets a string parameter, returns a complex type weather, and this complex type weather, it's essentially just the Java bean has three private fields, and then each field has a setter, set of getter and uh, getters and setters. This weather condition, which uh, just you know represents a particular condition for the weather object, is an enumeration. So uh, in this particular example, it's it's fairly trivial, but it's at the same time fairly representative of typical use case when you deal with complex types. Uh, this weather object also contains a collection of zip codes that this weather applies to, which is just the generic of string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, compile this weather service, and uh, I, I use an IntelliJ idea here. And I'm also going to deploy this as a jar. And right here I do this through this build artifact. It automatically copies this jar file into my instance of WebWarp, and which we can verify through uh, by going here. So this is my web warp is running right here in this instance. So web inf lib, so I have this weather service dot jar. Okay? So now uh, since this jar is in there, and notice that my my web warp is, is running. I haven't I didn't need to restart it. The jar file was automatically deployed. Let me switch to Flex Builder and I'm gonna show you uh, an application that I built that uses this generic destination, which is, which is what I'm talking about in this item number one. So right here, it's once again fairly trivial. Uh, there is an init method which is invoked on creation complete, complete. And in there, I create an instance of remote object. And uh, in the source, I'm going to put con dot weather weather service, okay? which essentially just identifies the class that I just built. And let's switch in there just to see. So it is my com.weather.weather service. So right here, I uniquely identify the class that I want to invoke. Uh, get weather uh, is the method we will invoke. I add the result listener and the fault listener. When we get the weather back, uh, just to show you the design for this application. So here it is. I'm going to type the city name. And once we get the result back, I'm just going to populate all these fields and the list. Okay. Now, the, the thing is that since I deployed the, the, the class, I didn't have to go anywhere to any of the configuration files. I didn't have to register any destinations. The class, just by the virtue of being deployed, is automatically exposed by WebWork. So right here, the, this application, this Flex app is being compiled. Let me go ahead and run it. I'm going to type in, we'll say Dallas, get weather. So now we have a full round trip in vacation. Okay. So the cool thing is that I didn't have to do really anything. I just put a jar file in there, and I can immediately 
yet uh, get advantage of the, the, the fact that it's being exposed as a service. Okay, so let me go back to my uh, PowerPoint. By the way, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. I'll be I'll be checking uh, if if there are any questions as we go. So here it is, generic destination. The cool thing about the generic destination, actually it is misspelled here, it should be generic destination, I apologize about that. So uh, whether it is just a plain Java class, whether it's a Spring object, whether it is uh, uh, an EJB, simply by the virtue of being deployed, it is automatic, automatically exposed. Okay. Now speaking of uh, Spring, so we mentioned that uh, generic destination can be applied to Spring beans. Let me show you. Let me show you something that is that I think is pretty cool. So right here, uh, this is my web orb installation, and I already have Spring enabled. So I'm going to go into one of the uh, files where all the beans are defined, and uh, open it in, a, in an editor. All right. So there's a, and I did prepare this bean. So let's just call it weather bean. So now this weather bean is deployed. Now, as far as Spring is concerned, once the beans are, are added or uh, deleted, you do need to restart the, the, the Spring container. Perhaps there is a way to do this, but I'm not aware of that. So now the same weather service that I have deployed is also deployed as a Spring bean. So here it is. It's called weather bean. Okay. Now if I go back to my Flags app, and rather than defining it as a class, if I were to specify it as weather bean, so now I'm going to be making the same application. is going to be talking to the same Java class, but now exposed as a spring bean. So if I were to run it again, it's going to be exactly the same result. So we'll just say Tokyo. So here it is. Exactly the same app, but now the invocation is actually going through the spring framework. Okay? So here it is. That was uh, that was the demonstration of the generic destinations. Okay, let's move on. Service browser. Okay, so service browser is something that is built into web orb. Whenever you deploy and run web orb, the service browser is there, and the, and the service browser is available through uh, through the management console. And uh, let me get the console going here. All right, so here's our so management console. If I go to services, this is our service browser. The cool thing about the service browser is that anything that is currently deployed into Web Orb is, is automatically picked up and visualized through the service browser. So remember that weather service.jar that we compiled here and deployed into Web Orb. If I go into web in slash lib, and here it is. Here's our weather service.jar. And by going into weather service.jar, I can start inspecting everything that this jar contains. So here it is. Here's our weather service, uh, weather condition, and all of, all of these classes. Okay. In fact, on this weather service, sorry, if I expand it, I can see the method get weather. And not only that, I can also just try invoking this method directly through our service browser. Okay. So here it is. This is exactly the same invocation that we tried from a Flex app, but now I'm doing it directly through our service browser. And uh, remember that we also registered exactly the same class as a spring bean, and uh, now if I go into spring beans, here it is, my weather bean. So that's exactly the same service, but now exposed as a spring bean. So the service browser is quite powerful because anything that you deploy, whether it's a jar file or if you were to deploy just plain uh, Java classes into web and classes, you will be able to see it all through uh, through the service browser. Okay. If you work with SOAP web services, then any services that you register with web or will show up right, right here. So I think that there's a, there's a service that I was debugging with. That's why this one is not, is not opening up. But anyway, so service browser is definitely another very clear differentiator that, that we are very proud of. Okay? So let's move on. Uh, code generation. So code generation is also something that you get out of the box with web work. Let me show you how code generation works. So going back into our service browser, uh, right here, if we were to go and target exactly the same service that you are familiar with, and that's weather service, right here, the service is a weather service. Once I click on the actual weather service node, the service browser and the code generator automatically kick the code generator automatically kicks in. 
So right here, notice that for this particular service, the code uh, the code generator that I have selected is flex remote. So we, the web web dynamically generates all the action script code that you can use to create the actual plumbing and remoting uh, infrastructure between flex client and this specific service. Okay. So here I have value object corresponds to our weather. Uh, uh, for the enum, we created enum as close as it can be in action script because action script doesn't support enums. But uh, there's also actual service proxy class. Uh, so all of it is available right there. So the code generator is uh, can is capable not only generating code for flex remoting, but it also supports flash remoting. So here it is, just plain action script classes that you can import into into flash. We support a bunch of different frameworks like Mate. So here's all the all the classes generated for the for the Mate framework. The same goes for Swizz. There is Pure MVC, uh, Cairngorm, uh, and and also Ajax, which is something that we'll talk about in, the, in a little bit later today. Let me show you how this code generator actually works. So right here, I can uh, generate not only just the, the the basic classes, but I can also generate project files. So if I click on this, all the all the Eclipse Flex Flash Builder project files are generated. I click Download Code, and WebWorp gives me a zip file. So let's just remember that it's called webworp.codegen and then three in the parentheses. I'm going to switch to Flash Builder. Uh, this is actually Flex Builder, and I'm going to import this project that WebWorp created for you. So it's the existing projects into workspace. Okay. I'm going to select the archive file. There's no reason to expand the zip, and uh, here it is: WebWorp Code Gen three. So open it up. And here's the weather service that was created for you. Okay, so uh, the the basic application is is really not there. It includes all the all the code that is generated by WebWorp, but we still need to create the actual app. So let's do this right here. We have this weather app that I created by hand, and then this is all the code that I have to write. Okay, so I'm going to take this particular MXML and import it into the generated app. That, that we got from WebWorp, and it's called Weather Service. All right, so here's here's all this code. Now, in a, uh, since uh, since we have now all the remoting in added by WebWorp to this project, let's just use it. So uh, the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to declare my model private model and that's going to be that's going to be weather service model and I'm going to make this model bindable and I'm also going to create a service and that and the service is really just the wrapper on the server side service so here it is weather service I'm going to pass model into the service okay uh, and as far as the binding between uh, the labels and everything that is displayed, for instance, for weather condition, I'm going to go into model, get weather result, uh, condition. And the same thing that I'm going to do for the other ones. So for humidity, it's going to be humidity. For precipitation, precipitation. And for zip codes, plus to zip codes. So here it is. So the only thing that I need to do is uh, create this get weather function. And inside of this function, I'm just going to use the service that is created for me. But notice that the service, which is the class generated by WebWorp, already has the method that is uh, that, that was derived from the service side. So here is get weather. And then in here, I'll just need to put the value of city name. City name dot text. All right, so this app is ready, and let's just run it. 